we all know what prayer is. Some of us, we know prayer to be a communication between man and God. Some of us, we know prayer to be prosuke, which means a two-way communication. That comes down to prayer being a dialogue, not an analogue. Meaning prayer cannot be a one-way street, a one-way thing. Where they pray and they pray and they pray and they leave the secret place because they have prayed. No wonder why people don't see results or manifestations. It's because they are doing exactly what James said. Not because you do not pray. And then the Bible says, I don't know who asked. But I have prayed, I have asked. And then James said, it's because you ask amiss. Another vision will say, you pray amiss. So prayer is not an analog, but a dialogue. And we all know that. Praise the Lord, everybody. How, do, how does prayer become an analog? Is when one prays, and after praying, they leave the presence of God. Doing you a talking to God but you did not wait for God to talk back to you. So every time I open my mouth and I talk to God, I'll have to give God a chance to speak to me. But most Christians are not raised that way. Like I always say that whoever feeds you guides your convictions. It does not matter how powerful you are. The enemy can limit you by putting somebody in front of you in the name of a mentor, in the name of guardian, in the name of spiritual father. Because praise the Lord everybody. What you know gives you access to only what you know in the realms of the spirit. Let me put it in a way that church people don't understand. You only travel to the direction of what you know. So if I come as a man of God and I say to you, to see, angel is to see angels is demonic, guess what happens? You will never have an appetite to see an angel. That God will have a message for you and bring an angel. You will start rebuking and binding that angel. Why? Because in your world, angels are demonic. And how are they demonic? Is because the one who's leading you, who's feeding, minister to people that to dream is demonic. And guess what? There are those that believe that. And not that it's demonic, is because whoever leads you, prayer is not prayer. And prosuke, prosuke is two-way communication, meaning you speak, he speaks back to you. He speaks back to you. If I come to you now and I start, you must be able to speak back to me. But in order for you to speak back to me, I must be able to listen. So we pray through prayer. We listen through meditation. I talk to God in prayer. In meditation, God speaks to me. That's why the word meditation or the word to meditate is the word hagar. And that's where God now speaks to me. I utter no word. But what I'm doing is I'm listening. And I'm not listening with the ear of the flesh. Isaiah says morning after morning, he awakens my ear. He is not talking about this ear. Praise the Lord, everybody. So since everybody knows what prayer is and what prayer is all about, I don't want to talk about that. But I want to talk about what happens when you don't pray. Glory be to God. I want to talk about what? What happens when you do not pray? Are you guys ready? And if you're writing, brothers and sisters, you might as well as write this one down. Prayer is a necessity for survival. If you're writing, you might as well as write it down. Prayer is a necessity for survival. And the maintenance of daily victory by the believer. So you obtain victory through prayer and you maintain it through prayer. Whatever you get through prayer must be maintained through prayer. The miracle is not in you getting it. 
The miracle is not in you coming out. The miracle is not in you crossing. That's why people will pray for debt cancellation. People will pray for deliverance. And when that happens, coming out of a certain problem or situation or even addictions, addiction, the miracle is in me staying out. So a lot of people will trust God for supernatural debt cancellation. That is okay. But that's not where the miracle is. The miracle is when I stay out of it. That's why you find people being delivered today. And tomorrow the same person is being delivered. And tomorrow the same person is being delivered. It's because one is confusing casting out of demons with what I call demonic manifestations. So a lot of believers will be excited because something happened and forgetting that the miracle is in you staying out of it. I don't know if that makes sense to somebody. Can you move me on Zoom? I think uh, I've wronged people here today on Zoom. Maybe, maybe YouTube is hearing what Apostle is saying. So what you get through prayer, you'll have to maintain through prayer. If you prayed for a husband and God gave you a husband, what will keep that husband is prayer. If you prayed for a job and God gave you a job, what will keep you in that job is prayer. That's why a prayer for you to be unlocked in the spirit, it will take prayer for you to stay unlocked. That's why you hear somebody say, I used to see in the spirit. Every time I hear somebody say, I used to, I used to. In most cases, I run away. Uh -uh. <laughs> you don't want to be where God was. You want to be where God is. <laughs> Hence, I always tell this where God speaks. Are we flowing? So I want to show you what happens when you do not pray. John 10.10. 10. Let's start there. The book of John, chapter 10. And of course, I will want us to read verses 10. And you can read for us. Uh, Thank you, Apostle. The book of Sister Nongazmuli can read for us, yes. Thank you, Dad. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. Yes. The thief cometh not, uh -huh. but for to steal have life, uh -huh. and that they might have it more abundantly. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Sister Nongazmuli. John 10, 10 gives us what I call the job description. Chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Thank you. Here Jesus is talking about the enemy. He's talking about the devil. It pains me when Christians leave like the devil is their friend. It pains me. When a believer in Christ leaves as if the enemy understands the language of diplomacy. As if the enemy is kind. I once told a woman, I said, what you are dealing with, if you do not stop it, it will mesmerize your children. And if none of them will be able to stop it, it will mesmerize their children's children. And she said, man of God, where did I get it? I looked at her and said, you got it from your mama. And that is because spiritual things are transferable. Remember the faith that with her mother, Lois. So if faith can be transferred from a grandmother to a mother, from a mother to a child, people are dealing with today. Even in meeting poverty, that never started with you. It's what I call an inherited giant. And the reason why you were able to inherit it is because your mother or your father was not able to silence it, was not able to conquer it. 
I'm about to say something very big here, so you better pay attention. So I said to her, you got it from your mama. She didn't understand. I said, that's because the devil, he's so mean that after dealing with you, he does not get to a point where he says, you know what, I've tormented this person or this family for a long time. Let me leave them alone. He finishes you, and when he's done with you, he goes to whatever is connected to you. Just as God, God is a generational God. Amen. When he works, he works generational. When the enemy works, he works generational. Because the enemy copies everything that God does. That's why God said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's a generational God. Remember, the battle was a generational battle from the book of Genesis, chapter 3. I will put what? Amenity, which is amenity between what? The seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. So the battle has been going on for generations. The woman has a seed and the serpent has his seed. And these two are enemies. Why? Because there's what? Enmity between the two. So up to date, anything that is close to God, anything that wants to know the truth, the enemy hates. But now, the book of John, as I'm about to minister, tells us, or gives us what I call his job description. He can't help but steal. He can't help but kill. He can't help but destroy. If you thought he was just here to steal and kill, well, you are mistaken. After killing, he destroys. Meaning, he, he, he leaves nothing in any way. You know, you have heard the phrase, never leave an enemy behind. So if you destroy, make sure that you destroy anything that has potential to grow and come back for you. So that's what the enemy does. So they destroy the, it's beyond you. Ah, yeah. The killing can be just you, but the destroying is beyond you. To an extent that he does not just deal with you or finishes you, he also deals with those that can give you your fire back. I don't know if that makes sense. I think I'm ministering to Cecilia here. I thought I was at church. Veronica is hearing me. Praise the Lord, everybody. So John 10.10 10 is telling every believer, write this one down, that you have a real enemy out there that does not want you to succeed. Does not want you to be a testimony for the glory of God. You have a real enemy that once he gets a chance, he will steal your purpose. He will steal your time. And once he gets hold of your time, he gets hold of your season. So there is a real enemy out there, Christians. Who does not want you to succeed? Who does not want you to be uh, a testimony for the glory of God? Who wants to quench the fire of God in you and kill your appetite for prayer? Because every time you pray, every time you open your mouth and you begin to pray, guess what happens? It, is, it creates a spiritual portal where your spirit automatically becomes closer to God. There's a spiritual portal that is created. And my spirit man becomes subjected or rather becomes close to God. That's why we always say there are men who know the heartbeat of God. We are simply saying there are men who prayed to an extent that they became so close to God. That they will know God's thoughts. That they themselves will become the atmosphere. Hands are their hands. His mouth are his, is his mouth. Do you, do you, does, that, does that make sense to you guys? But I want you also to understand 
that as much as there is God, and God we know that he operates in what we call the divine realm. I said I'm going to be deep and I'm now going there. So if we have a realm that is divine, or the divine world, or godly world, so to say, it then tells us that we have a demonic world, demonic realm, which is the diabolic realm. Now, every time I pray, I'm interacting with the divine one. But I want you to understand that this one, which is diabolic and demonic, fights, number one, my prayer life. When I'm not praying, this one is fighting me. When I'm praying, this one is fighting me. Let me put it in a way that Christians will understand. Born again, people understand it. Christians will understand it. Now, for God, which is the divine realm, right, to intervene and to interfere in your matters or in any situation, you have to pray. He does not enforce his will and he does not force himself to you. Prayerlessness creates a barrier that God is not entitled to break. Are we together? But this realm which is demonic now, whether you pray or whether you do not pray, is actively, continuously trying to get to you. That every time you do not pray, I'll give an example. If you don't hear this one, this one is one of the best examples. And if you do not hear it, there is a problem. Peter has a garden. One hectare. As a matter of fact, this is a farm. And then he decides, you know what? I don't have the crop. I don't have the seed to plant in my, the seed that I want to plant in my garden or in my farm. And as a result, I'm not going to bother and plant anything. Now, Peter goes to sleep. And when he wakes up, something has grown in his garden. Whatever grew, grew without his permission. But it's his farm. So just because he's not planting anything, it does not mean something won't grow. That is how prayer is like. Just because you are not praying, it does not mean something is not growing. Something is growing, but what's growing is what you do not want, which is diabolic. So every time there is an attack towards your prayer life, in your prayer life, there is an attack on your destiny. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. You and I are children of destiny. You and I, God has plans for us. You and I, God wants us to succeed. But there is an enemy who will do anything to make sure we do not. Spiritual attack does not start when you are being strangled at night. Where something it doesn't work like that. Spiritual attacks begin when your prayer life is attacked. Uh -uh. You know you are under spiritual attack when you don't pray like you used to. When you don't feel like praying like you used to. When all of a sudden there is so much distraction. Because the enemy, when it comes to him silencing you, when it comes to him stopping you from prayer, he doesn't stop you by whispering to you to say, stop praying. Because if he said that, you'll have known this is the devil and you'll pray. But he stops you from praying by distracting you. Watch this, you'll pray later. And as you watch, remember, it's called television. Two words. There is a vision in it. And the word vision, we are talking about the highest form of sight. Mm -hmm. And whatever we see with our eyes is sent to our spirit man. I don't know. Our, mm -hmm. our eyes bring illumination to our spirit man. Mm -hmm. 
That's why God compared what he's about to do in our lives to something that we have not seen. Because our spirits can travel as far as we have seen. I don't know if that makes sense. Then he says, what no eye has seen. He is then dealing with your level of expectations. Because if he dealt with what you have seen, you will have given God a bar. To say, this is how much he's going to do. So he says, what no eye has seen. Meaning what your spirit has not registered. What your spirit has not taken in. Ayah. Ayah. Come on now. Come on now. Come on, church. Come on, church. Jesus said, so that to see they may see, but not to perceive. Praise the Lord, everybody. So, I want you to understand that every time you sit like this and you watch, it gets into your spirit. Because you're not just watching, you are hearing. And faith cometh by what? By hearing. So there is a spiritual transition that is happening that you are not aware of. Because anybody that writes, it doesn't matter what place there is, that person is inspired. There is a motive. There is a goal to be achieved. And some writers are inspired not by God. There is an agenda that needs to be pushed. So every time you watch television, you are being told a vision. That's why most of the time when you go to sleep, you watching funny things. When you sleep, you dream of those funny things. It's because something has been imprinted. There is a, 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 a printing that took place in your spirit. I don't know if I'm too deep or I'm just saying my things here. I'm trying my best so that even babies in the Lord will understand this. It is a spiritual battle. It is a spiritual war. Say, I hear you, Apostle. If you are following, says my word, God, I'm grateful for coming to YouTube and finding this message. That is Eunice. God bless you, Eunice. If you are getting it on YouTube, quickly put fire emojis. If you are getting it on Zoom, quickly put fire emojis there. Prayer is not just begging, brothers and sisters. Prayer is to connect with God. Prayer aligns your spirit man with the Holy Spirit. And once your spirit man is aligned with the Holy Spirit, it means your spirit man is aligned with the presence of God, with the wisdom of God, with the purpose of God, and with the plan and plans of God concerning your life. When the Bible says to us, no man can know a man better than his own spirit. And then continues to say, no man can know what is in the mind of God except God's spirit. Yes, yes, so whenever I pray, I connect with God. And my prayer life aligns me with the spirit of God. So if I'm aligned with the spirit of God and it is the spirit of God that searches what is in the mind of God, I end up knowing the mind of God, the wisdom of God, the purpose of God, the plans of God Amen. concerning my life. Yes, that when I see something that is not in the plan of God concerning my life. I'm able to reject it. So a man can come into your life, in your life as a woman, looking good with a tie, with a Bible under his arm. But because you are no calibro shatakabaya, you are not ignorant, and the enemy has no way of taking you by surprise. Your mind, your spirit knows what is in the mind of God concerning your life. You can look at the man and say, you look good, but you are not the one for me. Ah, you're not hearing me. I once told a young, man, a young woman in church and she didn't understand. She understood later. When she came and she said, Apostle, I need an advice. I said, I'm here. And she said, there is this man. Oh, God. His prayer life. She's, I said, just because somebody is good, it does not mean you are to marry them. We don't marry somebody because they are good. A person can be good but not good for you. My purpose for life and the plans of God concerning my life must come first 
Because when it comes to the issue of who I decide or who I want to spend the rest of my life with, this is the second most important thing that one person can ever embark on in a sense of after salvation. So after receiving Jesus, the second most important thing in your life is who you choose to spend the rest of your life with. Because either that person will cause you to be in a cage for the rest of your life, or that person will be the reason why you're going to thrive. So I don't marry because somebody is good. I don't marry because somebody prays. I don't marry because somebody dresses good. I don't marry because somebody has been a Christian for 15 years. You can have all those things, but not for me. Are we together? So prayer now aligns your spirit man. I, uh... Brothers and sisters, let me put it in a way that born again Christians will understand. <laughs> not babies, but matured ones. Paul comes and he says something here. In Ephesians 6, he says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. That is verse 10. And in his mighty power. I said, Paul, what are you talking about? He said, hold on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He gets to verse 12 now. I said, what are we wrestling against? He said, principalities. I'm, a, I'm about to be deep. Somebody say, be deep, Apostle. He says, principalities. I said, wait a minute. What do you mean? He says, wickedness. Just because you have weakness towards somebody, it does not mean they have weakness towards you as well. Let me put it in the way. Some of you have a weak spot for other people, yet they have a wicked spot for you. That's why whenever we pray in our church, you'll hear people declare saying, I'm protected from the wickedness of men. When Paul said we fight against wickedness, let me break it. Somebody say break it down. Break it down. Uh, the year we are going to be deep now. You better be excited. What we are about to do right now is too deep. Albertina, are you here? Albertina, are you here? Albertina, are you here? That's more like it. That's more like it. Hope. Uh, I wish I could pronounce your second name there. Are you here? Come on, Zoom, wave your hand. If you are ready, say, I'm ready, Apostle. I'm ready, Apostle. If you are ready on Zoom, say, I'm ready. If you are ready everywhere, say, I'm ready. Because now I'm about to take you deeper and take you higher at the same time. Watch this. He says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is going to be deep. He says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Forget about your professor. Forget about your mother-in-law. That's flesh and blood. He then tells us what we are up against. He says, principalities. He doesn't stop there. Why didn't Paul say we wrestle against the devil? You missed the revelation already. Why didn't Paul say we, we, why didn't he say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the devil? Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. I think uh, Kala, Kala Kata there, she's, 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 she's flowing. Kala is hearing Apostle. Albertina saying, I'm here. All right, amazing. Tamar, Tamarian family, I believe you guys are hearing me. Nelsiwe, am I talking to you today? Nelsiwe Majola, am I talking to you today? Get root. Am I making sense? Because I'm going to be like, Apostle, I know you to be a man of revelation, but today you are confusing me. I don't want to confuse anybody. I don't want somebody saying to Apostle, you are confusing me. I pray that all of you understand. Why didn't the enemy, uh, Paul say, we wrestle against the devil? Or we wrestle against demons? And that's it. Because that will have summed everything. But he says we wrestle against principalities. Mm -hmm. He moves on. He says wickedness. He says rulers of darkness. He doesn't end there. He says in high places. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. There is something there. Say go deeper. Go He's trying to tell us that in demonology there are ranks. In demonology, they are what? They are ranks. Principalities are not wickedness. 
wickedness are not rulers of darkness. So there are ranks. Let me break it down. Jesus, in Mark chapter 5, and I believe it should be verse, you start reading from verse 4. And when you get to verse 8, can we read, can we read it so that they see what I'm talking about? As a matter of fact, for the sake of context, can we start in uh, verse 1? And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarians. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. Somebody holla, unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains he had been plugged asunder by him. Uh, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, uh, night and day, he was in the mountains and uh, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, thou son of the most high God. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Verse 8, pay attention to verse 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean. Somebody holler unclean. unclean. Spirit. Then verse 9. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. What verse is that? Verse, verse 9. I want you to see something there. Jesus is asking this man, what is your name? He's dealing with the demon in the man. What is your name? And then we hear, my name is Legion, for we are many. It was supposed to be, our name is. But he says, my name, break it down. Legion means troop. Those that are writing, you might as well as write this one down. It's actually... Uh, a military term that tells us about the order that is in the army. That's what legion means. Troop or troops, so to say. Right? Which is troop. Pay attention now. And in the army, or rather legion, simple means uh, we are a troop and you can't deal with a troop that is not in rank. Follow me. I'll make sense in a few seconds. I'm trying to see uh, the best way that I can put it. So in the army, you have the ordinary. You have what we call corporals. You then have majors. You then have generals. All these people are in one army. But their functionalities are not the same. Some have stars on their shoulders. They end them. Some report to others. And some make decisions. Come on now. That tells you that demons are not all the same. That's why in demonology, you have demons in ranks. So when he said we are legion, he was not just talking about himself. In him. One takes order from the other. But I want you to understand that this was a territorial demon. Come on now. Amen. That had conquered a territory in the land of the Gadarians. Amen. That no man could overthrow this demon. Yes, it took Jesus to come where the demon was. Amen. Are you following? Amen. Or I missed you somewhere. That tells you brothers and sisters. That there is what we call. An unclean spirit. This is what we see Jesus dealing with. Amen. Ayah. There is what we call a demon. There is what we call evil spirit. These things are not the same. Uh -uh. 
Say break it down. A demon is different from a devil. A devil is different from an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit is different from evil spirit. And he said, I saw Satan. I, uh, say break it down. I, I thought people would understand that. Matthew 10 verse 1. The Bible says, and he called unto himself. Come on, Jesus. His 12 disciples. And he gave them power against unclean spirits. Amen. He gave them power against what? Unclean spirits. And to heal every manner of disease. To deal with unclean spirit. He gave them power against unclean spirit. Amen. Do you see that now? Amen. In Matthew 17, the same disciples, right? Who were given power. Before Matthew 17, let's talk about Matthew 15. Let's talk about Matthew 14. These guys, they go out. Jesus sends them out. Go. Take nothing. Leave. Don't take gold. Don't take silver. Go, but don't go to anybody except the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They went out. The Bible says, and they healed the sick. They delivered the oppressed. They dealt with unclean spirits. The Bible says to an extent that they anointed people with oil. Do you hear that? Amen. That's in the book of Mark. Now, they come back to Jesus. And they said, Master, you can't believe this. Jesus says, what is it? He says, demons, they obey us. When we speak, they, they obey. Jesus said, do not be excited. Because demons. We know the story. Now, are you guys hearing me? Okay. KB, am I fine here? All right. So Jesus says, do not be excited because demons hear you. But be excited because your names are written in the book of life. They are powerful. Demons listen to them. Do you hear that? The same disciples, nine of them, in the book of Matthew 17, Jesus takes Peter, John, James up the mountain of transfiguration. The Bible says a man brought his son who was tormented, who was vexed by a demon. Yes, that oftentimes he will throw himself into the lake of fire and into the water. Yes, the disciples, nine of them who are given power in Matthew 10, could not cast it. Mm. Jesus comes down. He cast it immediately. After the man said, I brought my son to your disciples, they failed. And when Jesus rebuked it, they came and said, how come? Pay attention, church. How come we're not able to cast it out? The reason why they are saying how come is because them not being able to cast it out was a surprise to them. Why? In Matthew 10, they are given power. And throughout, they have practiced that uh, exercise that power and they have seen it work. Oh, yes. Now there is a demon all of a sudden they are told this one you need to up your game. Yes. Matthew 17 21 except by prayer and fasting this kind meaning Jesus was saying you were able to deal with those ones but this kind hey. meaning their ranks that's why some of you you are able to pray for somebody and when you get home you are troubled more by another demon. Why? Because your rank can deal with this one. But the one that is fighting you is above your rank. I don't know if that makes sense. So there were disciples with power. But Jesus is telling them, he's saying this one. It is this kind. That's why some of some, sometimes it's not about fighting, fighting. You need to know what kind you are dealing with. Ah, the children of God, the way they are looking at me. They are ranks. Satan is so powerful on the ground. Not powerful than believers. Hear me very well. Right? He was a cherub. Are we together? He was a cherub. Uh, watch my video, uh, Nine Types of Angels. And their ranks. He was a, a cherub. He was above in rank. He was on top. When it comes to rank. He was also above Michael. Yeah, I know some people don't know that. Uh -uh. 
the way you're looking at me is because you don't read the Bible. You just know what you're told. In heaven, when Michael fought with him, you know how Michael overcame him? By the blood. You must read uh, Revelation 12. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by their word of their testimony. And when you read Revelation 19 verse 10, it says what? It says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony that they are talking about there is actually Jesus. Come on now. Follow me here. So Michael could not have defeated the enemy by himself. Satan by himself. He had to use or he had to overcome him by the blood and by the what? The word of their testimony. I know you're like, but that's not enough. We see in Jude 6, the enemy is fighting. Fighting for what? For the body of Moses. In the, yeah, in, it's in the book of Jude, yes. He's fighting for the body of Moses. The devil is there, Satan. Michael is there. Michael is not prevailing. Guess what Michael said? The Lord rebukes you. He didn't say, I rebuke you. Uh, you didn't catch it. He could not have rebuked the devil because the devil was up in rank. He's up in rank. When he was stripped of the glory, he remained in his rank. Because the callings and the gifts of God are irrevocable. When God gives you, he does not take it back. I, uh, I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, let me put it in a way that somebody will understand. When you do not pray, you are sending an invitation to unclean spirits, to demons, to evil spirits. Let me go deeper here. I, I pray that I'm not confusing you people. Let me go deeper here. Watch this. Say rings. Yes. One more time, say rings. Yes. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, we see Daniel praying, right? And I want to deal with something right now quickly that people take out of context. And deal with this thing the way they want to deal with it. Daniel is praying for 21 days. And people say, I'm doing Daniel's fasting. Right? But what I want you to understand is, Daniel was not planning to fast 21 days. Daniel was planning to pray until God answers him. So if God sent Gabriel and Gabriel appeared on the second day, it would have been two days prayer and fasting. We then need to understand why from the first place did Daniel pray. And the Bible tells us why he prayed and what he was praying for. The Bible says he was to seek what? Understanding. Understanding towards what? Towards what he was shown and what Jeremiah wrote about. So the man was after understanding. But when Gabriel appears to him, pay attention church. He says from the first day you set your thoughts to seek understanding. Thy prayers were heard and God answered you. So God answered him what? On the first day. He says but as I was coming down, meaning God released Gabriel. The answer that Daniel was looking for left God's hand on the first day. So Gabriel had the answer going down. But now when he got to the spiritual border where he's supposed to cross and come to the realm of men, which is the realm of time, there was a principality that controlled that territory. And the name of that principality was what? The prince of the kingdom of Page. He says, wait, you can't do nothing here. Hold on. And then he withstood him for 21 days. So Daniel is talking to God, yet God says, but I don't have your answer. <laughs> now, Gabriel is an angel. In your mind, you are thinking, this is an angel that stands in the presence of God. Why will Prince of Persia give him hard time? Rank. Just because you are an angel, it does not mean any angel can fight any demon. That's why we have seen ignorant believers saying, me, me, believe. Okay, let me not deal with that. You see, Gabriel 
had to call for a backup. He said it himself. He said, I called for Michael. Michael, he says to Daniel, as I'm talking to you, Michael is busy fighting the prince of the kingdom of Beijing. Meaning, if Michael did not show up, even now, I'll be still there. So, it simple means, and it can also mean, that somebody was answered 50 years ago. <laughs> what would have happened if Daniel stopped praying? Chances are, Gabriel would have went up again. But what kept Gabriel saying, I'm still going, it was because Daniel was still praying. Hence, when Gabriel arrives and appears, he says, I have come because of thy word. He does not say, I have come because God said I must come. Yes, uh, yeah. Meaning, the more you kept speaking, your words summoned me. So, every time you do not pray, you stop the activity of angels around you and in your life. No wonder why some of you are not answered. Uh, they are not hearing me. You put popcorns or something like that, right? Yes. And you switch it off. Praise the Lord, everybody. Ah, what's happening now? This thing is not working. Only two things popped up. No, leave it. Leave it longer. Yes. You will see the miracle. Yes. Prayer is like that. Sometimes not every time everything pops out at the same time. The Bible says, Abraham staggered not. Amen. I think Cecilia is hearing me. Amen. So it means Gabriel understood rank. For 21 days, Papa, Papa is fighting the kingdom of the prince of Persia. He's saying, my friend, you're not going anywhere. He says, no problem. I've, I've seen that. 21 days is too much. Michael, I need your backup. I need help. He called for backup. Michael came. When Michael landed, he then left Gabriel and he started fighting who? Michael. But Gabriel, even if there were small demons, he was able to deal with them. And he came down. He says, Gab he says Daniel, forgive me, my guy. I was supposed to be here from the first day. But because somebody there, you see ranks. So every time you pray, this is what happens. Never forget this until Jesus comes back. As a matter of fact, he's coming back very soon. Amen. Never forget this. And please remind me on the day of the rapture about this. Because I believe we'll see each other on the other side. Every time you pray, you increase your rank in the spirit. Not your anointing. Hear, hear me very well. There is a huge difference. Are we together? Whenever you pray, you increase your rank. Whenever you conquer and you come out of temptation victorious, right? You increase in grace. So no one can grow in grace unless they are tempted. No one can grow in rank unless they are prayerful. Uh -uh. That's why Jesus had to be tested, tempted of the devil. That was what? Grace. When he was praying, that was what? Rank. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. So he had to start ministry on another rank, on another level of grace. That's why when Paul was tempted and he felt like it's too much on him, he says, you know what? There is a thorn in my flesh. You know, I can't do this no more. And then he says, you know what, God, this is too much. Then God said what? My grace is sufficient. And my power is perfected in your weakness. Do you see that now? So every time you conquer temptation, there is always grace on the other side. So what? One grows in grace. Say amen, somebody. Amen. But whenever I pray, I grow in rank. So a pastor can be a pastor. But if he is not prayerful, I can be uh, above him when it comes to rank. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
That's why Jesus meets Paul. Of course, he was sold here. In Acts 9, he says, why are you persecuting me? Of course, he was persecuting the church, but Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting my people? He says, why are you persecuting me? The church is Jesus. When you persecute the church, you are persecuting Jesus. Amen. Now, of course, we, we, he went blind. Why didn't, after meeting Jesus, God release him for ministry? Because Jesus would have said to him, now you have seen me, go. You are powerful. No! As a matter of fact, there is a man called Ananias who sent to go and pray for Paul. He lays his hand. He's transferring something to Paul. And Paul, his eyes were open because he was blind for three days. Scales fell off, but not only that. In Acts 13, they are in church in Antioch. The Bible says, and while these prophets were prophesying, teachers were teaching, were in church in Antioch. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible, listen to this. It says, while these were fasting and praying, Aya! the Holy Spirit said, separate for me who? Paul and Barnabas. For what? The work that I've set apart for them. And the Bible says, and they laid their hand on them. But when the Holy Ghost assigned them now, commissioned them now, they were in prayer and they were fasting. What is that rank? I wish somebody could hear me. Whenever the enemy wants to mess your life, he will attack your prayer life. Things die in your life when you do not pray. It will make sense as I explain it. Every time you don't pray, the enemy hijacks something. There are seasons that were hijacked, not because they were meant to be hijacked, but because one did not pray. Let me put it this way. There are opportunities that were coming your way because God wants you to succeed. That, that, that's how simple it is. Then there were opportunities that were coming your way. But the enemy hijacked them. Uh -uh, let me put it this way. Paul says there is a great and effective door that has been opened for us. But there are many adversaries. Let me say it nicely. There is a great and effective door that has been opened for us, but there are many adversaries. He didn't say there is a door. He said there is a great, effective. Meaning this door leads to something great. But he says there are many adversaries. What does that mean? It means your opposition tells you about your position. I pray you heard that. The reason why there are adversaries is because there is an open door. So your opposition interprets your position. Why? Because demons don't gather around closed doors. They only gather around open doors. That's why every time you feel there is something pushing you not to pray, that's why you should pray more. Uh, uh, because your opposition determines what? Your position. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's one thing when you pray and you feel like praying and you do it. But it's another thing when the Holy Spirit drops a word and say pray and you don't feel like doing it. Right at that moment, put your flesh where it belongs. Because your flesh is an enemy to anything divine. So you need to be able to go beyond the veil of the flesh. He says there is a great and effective door. So the door is there, but there are many adversaries. So the enemy goes after open doors. And some of you, because there is a door, you lose touch with your prayer life. The door not that it has not been opened. And you feel like it's now impossible to do what you felt you could do yesterday. But now it seems hard. And you say, but yesterday you promised me the person is no longer interested. But you said one, two, three. The person says, ah, we'll see it next year. But you were keen yesterday. What happened? Adversaries gathered. 
So you open the door. I told you, just because you are not planting anything in your garden, it does not mean nothing will grow. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came. And he sowed tears amongst the wheat. While you relaxed, something happened. Unwanted things were planted. Prayer is a necessity for survival. You are playing with destiny if you go the whole day without praying. Daniel was a man of wisdom to an extent that he was a man of special intelligence. You must read Daniel 1 verse 17. It will tell you that. He had a special skill, sakal, that in the days of Daniel, there were magicians, there were warlocks, there were sorcerers. But guess what? Daniel outperformed all of them. But when you look for Daniel's secret, you will find it. And that was prayer. Why will a man who, as wise as Daniel, as gifted as Daniel, tarry in prayer? You, you are not close to that. There is no tangible testimony in terms of supernatural manifestations. But you feel like if anything has to happen, let it happen. If it's in God's will, it will happen. God does not work like that. If Jesus prayed, who am I not to pray? If Peter prayed, who am I not to pray? If James prayed, who am I not to pray? If Paul prayed, if Moses, who was told, I'll make you a God, prayed for 40 days and 40 nights, a man who saw the glory of God, saw the back of God, wrote the Pentateuch, Genesis, uh, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the man who walked with God. And yet he went to pray. If men like Elijah tarried in the mountains, prayed, who am I not to pray? If men like Paul understood prayer, if in the days of the church, the early church, where the Holy Ghost had just come on earth, and men and women prayed until the ground shook, who am I today not to pray? Every time you don't pray, the enemy kills something. Let me put it in a way that every believer will understand. In the book of Acts chapter 12, we read that James the elder, one of the disciples of Jesus, the elder. Why was he an elder? Because he was a core disciple. What does that mean? He was a disciple in the inner circle of Jesus. Jesus, every time I'm sure you have read the Bible, he took Peter, John, James. That's the James, so Elder James, right? In Acts 12, the Bible says something. Can we go there? Are you still with me? Amen. If you are with me on YouTube, please quickly put a fire emoji. If you are with me on Zoom, please quickly put fire emojis. People be like, why is he always saying people must say fire every time? Or... All of the time. Anybody that says you must not shout fire, run away from that person. You are dealing with something in them. Fire is God. Hebrews 12, 29 says, our God is a consuming fire. So every time you shout fire, you are tapping in the nature of God. Somebody shout fire. Fire. One thing about fire, fire burns. Fire consumes. Fire penetrates. Fire devours. You can put fire in a bucket and say, I'm transporting it. I'm it will deal with the bucket. It will deal with you. That's how powerful fire is. Unstoppable. What verse are you reading? Uh, Acts 12. Now about that time, Herod the king, stretched forth his hand to persecute, to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Let me explain who this John is. In Mark, Jesus gave him an, a different name. He said, you are a son of thunder. I know people know that the name of Peter was Simon. 
and in Matthew 16, and you read verses 16, his name was changed. That's okay. But Peter was not the only one who got a new name. Even James was now called son of thunder with his brother John. So James, this one, he was nicknamed son of thunder by Jesus. He said, from now, you guys are sons of thunder. <laughs> because of their zeal and their hunger for God. One time they refused Jesus' entry. John said, Master, and his brother, why? No, he said, if you permit us. <laughs> Those guys were dangerous. They refused Jesus' access and they said, here, Master, permit us to call fire from heaven and consume all these people. <laughs> Jesus said, wait a minute. <laughs> this is the James we're talking about. Yeah. Ah, this one will kill you for Jesus. Right. Now, the Bible says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. If the enemy could go after James, kill him with the sword. Come on, church. Humble yourself. Watch this. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take who? Peter also. We know who Peter was. The bishop of the church. Then the, the, those days were that days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him. Okay. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in verse 5 and 6. Okay? Watch this now. Actually, verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in what? But prayer. But what? Prayer. So we have prison and we have prayer. Oh, church, you didn't hear me. I taught you better. We have prison, but we have prayer. And there is a bad day. Meaning the Bible does not want you to focus in, uh, on what happened in the prison. It wants to focus you on prayer. It wants you to focus on prayer. I told you but cancels everything, right? So every time you read but, but cancels everything. Meaning pay attention to what comes after but. If I, I say I love you but, I've cancelled that. I was going to give you this money but. I was going to do it for you but, I've cancelled it. The fifth comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, but. The wages of sin is death, but. Okay? So he says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Verse 7 will shock you. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Two things happened. Prayer angel what killed james lack of prayer oh they didn't hear it when herod arrested james the church thought herod was bluffing the church thought god was going to intervene uninvited oh, yeah. when they realized that james was killed and herod is not bluffing then went after the bishop of the church. The church took it serious and prayed for him. And as they were praying, an angel was released. So what happens when we do not pray? Destinies are killed. Not only our destinies, also to, of those that are close to us. But what happens when I pray? There is an answer. And like we said, Hebrews 1.14, angels are ministering spirits. So God forever sends and releases an angel. So this angel would not have come if prayer was not made. Imagine situations that altered your life now. What would have happened if you prayed? You would have escaped them. There are situations that some of you are in right now that it will take you 10 years, some of you, 5 years to come out of. Why? Because you did not pray. I will put it in this way. I used to say, 2 minutes of you looking sexy can put you in 2 minutes of sex. That can put you in 20 years of child support with somebody that you don't like. I didn't say somebody you don't love. Love is big. You don't even like are we together? There are people that were
put in situations that are bigger than them by a two minutes decision. Somebody say prayer. prayer. Even if you don't feel like it, force yourself to pray. Every time you pray, here's a mystery. I give it unto you. God births new fire in you. I'm saying every time you pray, God births new fire in you. In the days we are in, things are not getting better. The days are dark. And they won't get better. For us Christians, we are not supposed to be subjected and, and controlled by what controls the world. We are, not, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. When the world says there's a counting down, thou shalt say there's a lifting up. We believe in that. Praise the Lord, everybody. The world has to be like this. Why? Preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I told you the world is not falling apart. It's falling into place. So that rapture can take place. And we have never been so close to rapture than the time we are in. Right? Jesus said, watch. They said, hey. And he said, pray. Jesus, even in at his last, he was praying. In Gethsemane, he was praying. If Jesus could pray, who are you to not to pray? I said this and I'm going to say it before, again. Genesis 1, 26. Let us create a man in our own image. I don't know who asked for what. And then answer came so that he can have dominion. Genesis 1, 27. And God created man in his own image after his own likeness. Created he them, male and female. No problem. Genesis 2, 7, he grabbed dust or out of the dust of the ground, he formed men. That is the flesh now. That is the container now. That is the shell now. The structure now. Then he took Genesis 1 man and he put him in Genesis 2 man. Meaning, man with dominion is not what you see outside. Dominion was not given to what you see outside. Dominion was given to Genesis 1 man and that is the spirit. So the devil keeps you busy in the flesh. He wants you to entertain Genesis chapter 2 men. Yet this man has no power. So in prayer, I'm entertaining Genesis chapter 1 men. The Bible says, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall vitalize Kalida Barush Shatakabai. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Shall vagorize your mortal bodies. Some of you, you used to pray. You didn't grow spiritually. No, 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 no. The fact that you're not praying, don't think I've grown. No. You're not promoted. You're demoted. In fact, you demoted yourself. So I used to pray. Five years ago, if you found me praying, no, you can't retire. They are not retired professor of, of prayer. Prayer is a necessity. If you can't pray, some of you don't understand the doors you are opening. Diabolic doors, evil doors. And the enemy comes after your children. I told people, I said, if this faith that Timothy moved in was not his and did not start with him, it tells us how much of an influence we have, not just in the physical, in the spiritual lives of our children. Sometimes when your mouth is closed, the attack does not only end with you. It goes to your dear ones. And some of you need to understand this and you need to hear from me. That no matter the matter, pray. Amen. When you are not seeing your answer, pray. Amen. When you are seeing the answer, pray. Amen. When you ask God for a husband and he gives you a husband, don't stop praying. Anything you get by prayer, you will maintain by prayer. Amen. That's why the children of Israel in Hosea 12, 13, he says, by a prophet, the Lord brought out Israel. And by a prophet, he preserved them. Amen. If God uses a prophet to bring you out, it will take the prophetic for you to stay out. Amen. 
I wish people would say, Apostle, we hear you. Apostle, we hear you. Listen, I told you. I said, today, me, I'll be long. And that is because the subject we are dealing with, we can't leave any stone unturned. Just ask yourself, what happened to you? If you used to pray and you can't pray like you used to, what happened to you? If you had an appetite for prayer, what, what happened to that appetite? You used to fast. You don't fast no more. Now you only fast when there is fast in the church. When you are reminded it's fasting on Wednesday. But apart of that, you will never fast. And you think you are going to move things in the spirit. While is there ranks and you hear an angel was coming down. And was stopped. A, an angel that is in the presence of God. Gabriel, by the prince of the kingdom of Asia. Let me show you what Jesus said about the devil. When he's, they said to him, he's using the name of the devil. He's working with the devil. In, in Matthew 12. If you can read 29 for me. Jesus called the devil a strong man. <laughs> I wish you could hear it better. Just hold on. Jesus called the devil, I think it's 28. He called the devil a strong man. 29. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. 28 says, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God is come unto you. Verse uh, 27 says, in, in, And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do you children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. When you read 26, If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. So I'm giving you context here. So read 29, please. Thank you, Apostle. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Yes. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house? And spoil his goods. Splanter his goods. Except what? Except he first bind the strong man. Ah, yeah. And then he will spoil his house. My God. Jesus called the devil strong man. Yep. Verse 30. No. We are done. I wanted to think. Jesus himself said, how can I go into this guy's house? Except I first bind him. In prayer, we bind the devil. We deal with him. Some of you, I will say this until Jesus comes. The enemy will never roll a red carpet and say, come and take what's yours. Amen. Lastly, the Bible says we have been blessed with all kinds of blessings. But there is protocol. And that protocol is prayer. Why am I saying that? It says you have been blessed with all kinds of blessings. And then it says in the spiritual realm. And other places in high places. So meaning the blessings are there. But in the spirit. So how do I tap in and I withdraw or I materialize those blessings? Prayer. It's more like going to the bank right now. And you have money and you stand at the door. And say I want my money. People will be like, are you mad? It belongs to you. You can prove it's yours. You can show them that you have it. But there is protocol. That's what most Christians do. They stand in the door and say, I'm a child of God. Shut up. There is protocol. <laughs> are we together? Yes, and you see... The enemy is not scared of you because you're a child of God. How many child, children of God are there? Are you, you are joking, seriously. Let me tell you what happened. Most churches, as we are talking right now, are turned into entertainment centers. Are we together? You hardly see prayer taking place. That's why people are sick while they're in the church. I'm about to say something that will cause some people to leave this broadcast. People are not saved, yet they go there every Sunday. And they say, that's my church. But they are not saved. They have not surrendered their lives, but they're in the church. They have not surrendered their lives to the one who's the reason why they go to church. 
What I'm about to say, you might leave this broadcast, but it's okay. People are depressed while they're in the church. You tell me, if scripture says, be anxious of nothing. And the Bible says, the peace of God that surpasses men's understanding shall guard your hearts. You tell me, what time did depression get to you? What door did depression use? Because depression is very simple. The definition of depression, I don't know what Google say, but what I know is depression is equals to fear, doubt, anxiety. When you are fearful of the future, when you fear the future, the outcome, and when you doubt the God that you are moving with, when you doubt what you are capable of, and when you are anxious, it leads to depression. Are we together? Depression has found its way into the house of God today. Why? Because what attracted people to the church was not power but entertainment. A praying church is a thriving church. Run away from any church where there is no prayer. Run away from any church where you come and you are told, we are here for 35 minutes. We'll preach to you and go home. Run away, especially in the days we are in. Run away. Just because you have been there for 50 years, it doesn't mean you should be there by now. You have a history, not the future with them. Where there is no prayer, run away. You know what Jesus said out of everything? About his house. He said, my house shall be called house of prayer. So every time we do not pray, it is no longer his house. Because his house, thank you Peter, is a house of prayer. He never said my house shall be called house of the word. But he said house of prayer. I'm not saying you cannot be challenged as a Christian. I'm not saying you cannot be attacked as a Christian. But there are certain things that prayer will create a bulletproof. I'm telling you now. Something went wrong, church. We, we might not accept it, but this generation is a generation that is jacked up and messed up. It's a generation that is after what God can do, not who God is. If one hears there is a prophet so and so downtown there, they don't even check the history of this man. Where does he come from? Who's mentoring him? Who's his father? Is he a Facebook prophet or what? Uh, they are, they are, they are gandagandas in, on Facebook. And fire, 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 fire. Are, are we together? When did he get saved? Has he tarried in the presence of God? Is this one motivated by likes? And who's fighting him? Because battles determine your rank in the spirit. That's why if you have a man that nobody fights him, be careful. If Jesus was told this, the disciples were persecuted, you, nobody in your church touches you. You are going the same direction with the devil. Because anything that is of God the enemy will do anything to stop it. Generals are not judged by the number of stars around their shoulders, but scars in the kingdom of God. I once told God, and that's the prayer that opened and, and, and said, you know, hell broke loose after that prayer. I said to God one time, God, I want to have a story to tell when I get to heaven. When Paul tells me how persecuted he was, Peter telling me how crazy it was, I want to have a story to tell. To say, as I walked with God, they tried me, they fought me, and they did not prevail because God was with me. Amen. Ah, from there, ah, the battles that came there were insane. And some subscribed to them. Because what? They thought it was true. Then it was later on when the same people who were coming after my life started apologizing. 
It's just that when they say things, they say it public. When they apologize, they come to church privately. Amen. And our people are seeing them. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All I'm saying is, when it comes to the things of God, prayer is a necessity for survival. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say, I refuse. I refuse. To be, to be distracted. I refuse, I refuse to, be to be stopped. Wherever you are in the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of prayerlessness. You know the book of Samuel says prayerlessness is a sin. Because if you are not talking to God, you are talking to somebody. I want us in the Holy Ghost, not tomorrow, now, I want us to pray. Amen. If you have not prayed the whole week, it might be difficult because you know what? Your engine is off. Are we together? But if you are somebody who prays and you are praying, it will be easy for you to pick up. Are we together? Amen. I want us to pray. Five minutes above, non-stop, above. Because some of you, after praying two minutes, you run out of gas. Your, 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 your engine starts taking. Two minutes, you feel like you have moved the prince of the kingdom of page. No ways. Stop joking. Don't play with your destiny like that. Don't play with what? Your destiny. And you are done. Ay. Uh -uh. Men who prayed are men who prevailed. Esther prayed and prevailed. Oh, amen. Say, I will, I will pray. One more time, say, I will, pray. I will pray. Say it like the devil is listening because he is listening and say, I will pray. I will pray. Some of you here, when you got born again, your prayer life was something that you yourself desired. What happened? May God restore you. Paul says, you foolish Galatians who bewitched you, you started the journey in the spirit, you are ending it in the flesh. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, you are not hot, neither cold, I will spit you. The kingdom of God is not for sissies. Say, I will pray. Prayer is pro suke. When you begin to pray and tarry, it's called radagai. When you begin to pray in a form of intercession, it's when you are kabashing. Prayer mixed with worship is kabashing. Are we ready? Yes. Say, I will, I will pray. One more time, say, I will pray. You know what the Bible says? It says, ye who are watchers, keep no silent. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now. It says what? Keep no silent. Don't be silent. Yes, King James says, stop, don't stop praying. Mm -hmm. Matthew, uh, Luke 18, Jesus says, men ought to pray always and not to faint. Mm -hmm. And that was the words. Those were the words of Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 5, and it says what? 17. Pray without ceasing. Oh, yes. Are we ready? Yes. In the shower, pray. Amen. Make declarations. That's actually the word pray there. Without ceasing. It's making declarations. In your car, declare. Why? Because thou shalt declare what? A thing. And it shall be what? Established. As big and great as Elijah was, he prayed and said to the servant, go out. What do you see? He said, nothing. He said, no problem. He went again. Go. What do you see? He said, nothing. He said, no problem. He went again. He said, go. 
He said, nothing. He said, go. He said, nothing. He said, the seventh time when he said, go, he said, what do you see? He said, I see a cloud. But the cloud is the size of a man's hand. Mm -hmm. Elijah said, I hear an abundance of rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what will happen if he said, go, and says nothing? He says, ah, it's not working. Pray without ceasing. Pray until something happens. Amen. We are people of prayer. Say with me, we are people of prayer. We are people of prayer. Say, we pray, we pray. Until, prayer until prayer starts praying through us. Praying through us. Say, it's prayer, it's prayer or nothing. Say, all my words, all my words are, spent are spent in prayer. Are we ready to pray? Amen. Say, I'm ready, Major. If you can pray in tongues, I want you to be praying in tongues. If you can pray in your language, I want you to pray in your language. Wherever you are, open your mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, open your mouth in the Holy Ghost. We stand against the spirit of
Ghost, open your mouth. Up two more minutes. Open your mouth in the Holy Ghost. have joined us in singing this song angels have joined us in singing this song as we sing it and we continue some of you you hear sounds and you'll hear voices let's sing let's sing let's sing let's sing we are left with a minute in the holy ghost somebody open your mouth and pray we are left with a minute 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 Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. I want to hear the church. I want to hear the church. Rekraka sada bakadoska. Eriko toko paradia hatse ligaba. Didianta ampre ligaba. Yakatu kube ekedia. Shedebeke duska prati. Maleke sejeke para. Baraka zia kasu. Come on somebody. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. We are almost there. 30 more seconds. We are almost there. We are almost there. Come on somebody pray. Come on somebody pray. Open your mouth and lift up your voice. For if there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Marco Salega Brante, Reco Soto Brecadia, Erica Dusca Brante Cadiga, Lacuma Anseliga, Racadiga Dusca Baya. In Jesus' name we pray. That is so. Somebody say that is so. That is so.